I often say this in the programs where I, I teach that uh, if you're going to coach, you have to love all 34 themes. And uh, if, if and you not only have to love it yourself, you sometimes have to help the people who have these themes love them, because if people don't love their themes, they're not going to they're not going to live them. And so we want to help build the love <laughs> for all 34 themes. Uh, there's a song that I remember. I'm 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 older. Back I think it might have been the Everly Brothers that sang this song. To know, know, know you is to love, love, love you. And uh, so we want to kind of help you know more about these themes so that you uh, love them a little more. And uh, today's theme is a theme that uh, it's deliberative. Last week we did Activator. We, we talked about the movers and the shakers, the people who are anxious to get started, people who have got this, in, this urgency, this need for speed. And uh, today we're going to slow things down a little bit. And uh, it's interesting to me, I think we live in a world that just, this is just my opinion, I don't have any data about this, but my <laughs> observation is that we live in a world that appreciates speed more than uh, slowing things down. Acceleration it seems to be more important and valuable than deceleration. But we know, but what we know is that some people have been successful because they really have been able to know how to slow things down. So we're going to talk about deliberative. I'm going to just talk and try to pull everything out of my brain that, that's in there about deliberative and then we're going to get uh, Diane on the uh, end of the conversation and Jeremy will kind of moderate a conversation uh, about because that's one of her signature themes. She's uh, a person that has deliberative. So here's how I would kind of summarize some of the key points about deliberative. First of all, these are people who are aware of and sensitive to risk. I think that's at the core of it. They can tell when something has the possibility of going wrong. And I think that sensitivity and awareness to risk is one of the things that uh, causes them to be very careful about making decisions. I want to make sure I make the right decision because if I make the wrong decision there might be some consequences and so uh, these are often people who are very careful decision makers. It's also people who really many times choose to think before they talk. I've observed that when, when you have a deliberative person in a group, initially in the group, they are going to be more of an observer of the group than the participant. They, they don't want to, they want to kind of check the lay of the land here. How, what, what are some of the risks that uh, are inherent just in, inside of this group? Uh, and finally, I think one of the things that the effect of people who have this uh, kind of awareness and sensitivity to risk is they are often very good listeners. They really observe what's going on around them and they're, they're very careful to, to tune into things in that particular way. So at the core of it I think though is primarily this awareness of potential problems and potential risks and, and trying to actually the word, a, a key word I think for deliberative is prevention. If I had to contrast that with activator it would be promotion. Activators are about promotion, getting things moving, getting things started. But people with a deliberative are often very good at uh, that. They they want to prevent bad things from happening, and that might sound kind of negative. But I think there. I was I was thinking about this theme within a context of a role, and uh, I've done some writing about themes and roles, and uh, I I wrote about what does deliberative look like in a could could deliberative look like in a parent? And here's what I wrote about a deliberative parent. My careful vigilance keeps my child out of harm's way and ultimately prevents their unnecessary pain and sorrow. Now I think that sounds like a good parent. They're, they're, they're interested in the safety and security of their children and they are vigilant. Now obviously a, a parent could take that too far but there are some basic safety and security issues that parents need to be aware of and that I think the deliberative parent it's one of the things that they might do very well. I also wrote something I, I've done some writing about aiming your themes at your spouse and that doesn't mean hitting them over the head with your theme but it means how could you use your theme to be a great spouse and this is what a deliberative spouse might sound like. There are always threats to intimacy with vigilance and care, I will guard our love and prevent its corrosion and erosion. 
And so I hope that kind of gives you a picture of what deliberative could look like within the context of a role. In terms of the domains that we have, the, uh, the executing, uh, influencing, relationship building, and strategic thinking, deliberative falls in the executing domain because it's really about how do we make decisions and how do we decide what to do and it really falls <laughs> in that level but I find that it, it, it is similar in many ways to strategic. Strategic people are very good at kind of considering the possibilities, future possibilities. I think when you use this word the ability to anticipate and imagine risk, I think that involves some thinking as well. That happens, these are not real things yet, so it really involves thinking as well. So I think to some degree it could fit in that thinking, strategic thinking domain as well. Sometimes it's helpful for, for people to have words uh, to, to apply to themes, and these are just some words that I think come to mind when I think about deliberative. Caution, problem preventer, risk reducer, I think security is an important deliberative word, safety, listener, um, conscientious, restraint, vigilant, guarded, sensible, serious, private. Those are all different words that could help to explain what that deliberative and, uh, and these are I think good words. Um, there, the, the basement of, of deliberative, in, and this is how sometimes deliberative can be perceived in a more negative way by those who don't have it, or it might actually, when it's raw, kind of uh, exhibit itself this way, is they might be seen as slow and indecisive. Remember, these are people who don't want to make a snap judgment or make a premature decision, so they <laughs> think things through. It takes time, so, so they might be labeled in that way. Um, some metaphors or, or uh, sayings that might kind of capture the essence of, of uh, deliberative is haste makes waste, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, and it, I think a jury is a good kind of illustration of what deliberation is. A jury <laughs> deliberates. They want to hear all the testimony, gather all the facts before they come to a judgment. And then, of course, we've talked about accelerator or activator as the accelerator. Deliberative would be the brake. And I often say, I, I, I want to have a car that has both of those. And usually, you don't find a person that has both of those. Occasionally, you'll find someone that has both high activator and high deliberative. But in most cases, people have a more, uh, a more developed accelerator or a developed brake. I also want to just say a little bit, and then I'm going to stop here and, and get some time for some dialogue here. Um, what does raw deliberative look like as compared to more mature deliberative? And I, I, I've done some writing about this to try to think about what raw deliberative, what raw themes look like when compared to more mature themes. And here's how I have, I have said this, and this may not be perfect, but it may be a way to kind of help us get some idea. Raw deliberative looks like this. I am cautious because I scare easily. And I think it has to do with the sensitivity to risk. I, I notice dangerous things to some <clears throat> degree before other people do. And so at its raw form, it could be people that are kind of scared quite easily. Here's what I think it looks like in its more mature form. I am cautious because I care deeply. I think it's people who use their caution to protect, to defend, to guard, secure, to secure things that are important and valuable. I mean, to some degree, when you think about um, the kind of security that we go through as we travel now after 9-11, um, the, 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 the process, that is kind of a deliberative process. And for, as someone who travels frequently, sometimes that bugs me. Sometimes it annoys me, but I know ultimately it has probably saved lives. It is worth the, uh, the slowing down, slowing down the boarding process so that we can all get on an airplane and, and feel safe. 